Okay, so good day everyone. In this video, tatalakayin natin ang tungkol sa prizes and winnings in taxation. Um, first thing is, we need to elaborate what is prizes and the taxation of prizes. Um, huwag pong malilitohan na yung prizes na sinasabi ko dito is hindi yung halaga ng isang product. Okay po? Yung prizes dito is yung matanagin mo. Kapag ka kasi sinabi yung prizes, it is something offered or won as an award sa isang contest or competition for superiority or victory. Ito yung nilagyan mo ng effort to won a prizes. So, sabi nga dito, um, the taxation of prizes varies. Ibig sabihin, yung prizes sa taxation is iba-iba. Prizes may be exempt. Okay? So, yun. Ang prizes daw dito sa taxation ay maaaring exempt. Di ka pag sinabi natin exempt, hindi siya taxable. Okay? So, um, may be exempt from income tax or subject to either final tax or regular income tax. Um, tatalakayin natin dito yung mga prizes exempt from income tax at yung mga recipients and subject in tax. Okay? So, ang exempt prizes ay under siya na not, ng not taxable from the word itself. Okay? If Prizes received by a recipient without any effort on his part to join a contest. Okay po? So, yung recipient dito, siya yung tumatanggap ng prizes. Ibig sabihin, nataxable siya or exempted yung mga prizes na, tata na, sorry, na natanggap ng isang recipient kung ito ay hindi nag-effort on being a part of a contest. Katulad na lang halimbawa ng Nobel Prize, Most Outstanding Citizen, Most bene Benevolent, Citizen of the Year and similar awards. Okay po? Maaaring mer merong malilito or miski naman ako talaga ang malilito but I will do my best para maipaunawa sa inyo. Okay, di ka sabi ko kanina yung prizes is something offered or won which is you need to put an effort. Pero sabi nga dito um, prizes ay maaaring hindi, um, merong maaaring hindi taxable. So, ito na yun. Okay po? So, the next one naman, number two um Prizes from sports competition that are sanctioned by their respective national sports organization. Um, ito naman ay tungkol sa mga athletes, whether the competition ay ginawa sa Pilipinas or abroad. Maaaring not taxable yan. Bakit? Kasi nga, um, dahil doon sa sinasabi natin na sanctioned by their national sports competition. Ibig sabihin nun, sumali siya sa competition na under ng isang specific corporation. Okay po? So, now let's move on to requisite of um, exemption. Um, hindi rin siya taxable if the recipient was selected without any action on his part to enter the contest. Okay po? So, ibig sabihin nun, um, the recipient is kusa siyang pinili or hindi nag-effort na mapasali sa isang contest na yon to gain a prizes. Okay po? So, it is not subjective to tax dahil wala naman siyang effort na ibinigay doon. So, mamaya, malalaman natin kung ano nga ba yung sinasabi ko or kung paano natin malalaman na subjective yung isang prices or hindi. Okay, well, so number two, um, the recipient is not required to render substantial future services as a condition to receiving receiving the price or reward. Uh, meaning nun, Nung nanalo na sila, hindi na sila magre-render ng substantial future services as a condition, kumbaga no string attached. Okay po? So, nung natanggap mo yung prizes, that's it. Wala ka nang kailangan gawin ng substantial effort. That's a saying na uh, um, mag-thank you na lang. Okay? Yun na yun. Ngayon naman is we are going to the naman is about the taxable prices. Kanina ay yung hindi taxable. Okay? So, for individual income tax figures, Taxable prizes, prizes are subject to either final tax or regular tax. Pag sinabi natin final tax, it is a kind of withholding tax which is prescribed on certain income payments. Also, hindi din to um, creditable laban sa income tax na dapat babayaran ng isang pay or yung receiver of the income. Under of National Internal Revenue Code or yung NIRC, there is no um, final tax and decision on corporate prices. Okay po? So, take a look on this table. Um, on the first row, um, meron tayong amount of taxable prices. And the second one naman is yung recipient. Okay? So, the first one is prices exceeding 10,000 pesos. 
As you can see, the price exceeding 10,000 pesos. Okay, so pag sinabi mo natin exceeding, humihigit or tumataas. Okay po, so exceeding na 10,000 pesos. When the recipient is um, individual, magkakaroon ito ng 20% as final tax. Okay, so yun po ay kapag humigit lamang sa 10,000 pesos yung price. Pero pagdating sa mga corporations, um, siya naman ay regular tax. Okay po, sa, yun po ay sa exceeding pa rin. And the second one naman is yung prices not exceeding 10,000 pesos. Kabalik na rin naman siya no nauna. Okay, so when it comes to prices not exceeding 10,000 pesos, both of them, I mean, um, yung individual and corporations will be a regular taxes. Okay po? So, yun po, lagi lang po natin natandaan na kapag humigit siya ng 10,000 pesos, um, ang individual po ay magkakaroon ng 20% final tax. While yung corporations naman ay regular tax. And then, yung hindi naman higit ng 10,000 pesos or yung, or yung not exceeding 10,000 pesos, both of individual and corporations is regular tax lama. Okay po? So, um, recall also that final taxation does not apply to foreign passive income. Okay? So, yung passive income po, ibig sabihin nun, ito yung in, any income na natanggap or naipon na sino mang tao na magiging kita din ng isang foreign um, personal holding company. Okay po? Hence, prices from foreign sources are subject to the regular income tax. Okay po? Okay, so ngayon naman ay dadako tayo sa winnings. Kanina ay prices naman. Okay, so pag malilito ha, ang winnings po is, okay, so para silang um, napanalunan. Pero ang winnings is something offered or won in a lottery of game of chance. Hmm, yun yung natanggap mo, hindi dahil ikaw yung panalo. O pinakamagaling, pinaka but rather dahil swerte ka. Okay, so there is a game of chance, ika nga. The best example dito is yung lottery or lotto. Okay po? So, lahat naman po tayo ay familiar kung ano yung um, tinatawag natin lotto. Okay? So, um, for individual income taxpayers, winnings received from sources within the Philippines are generally subject to 20% final tax. Except, Philippine charity, sweepstakes, office, or yung PCSO or lotto winnings amounting to 10,000 pesos or less. Um, sinasabi nga dito na once na yung individual um, income taxpayers ay nanalo within the country or Philippines, the subjects is generally aligned to 20% as final tax. Okay po? So, mali ba naman sa PCSO or lotto winnings na may amount na um, 10,000 or less? Okay po? So, um, similar to prices, there is no final tax imposed on corporate winnings under the NIRC. Winnings that are not subjected to final tax um, by the payer should be reported as part of the regular income. Also, winnings from foreign sources are subject to regular income tax. Ay, sa diba nga, sabi natin kanina sa prices, there is no final tax na naka-impose kapag ang recipient ay corporation. Okay? Sika, nabanggit ko po yung kanina. Um, Tula din siya sa corporate winnings, which is under na NIRC. Um, yung mga nanalo or winnings na hindi subjected as final tax, um, magiging reported as part ng regular income tax siya. At the same time, yung winnings from foreign sources ay subjected din as regular income tax. Okay po? So, okay. Um, dada ko naman tayo sa type, type of winnings. Um, para katulad din to ng kanina. Okay po, yung table. Um, um, first, um, PCSO lot or lotto winnings not exceeding 10,000 pesos. Um, um, the other row is yun yung mga recipient, which is ang um, recipient ay individuals and corporations also. Okay po, so... Um, so, sa, uh, sa una po ay, tiga, not exceeding. Hindi siya nag -e exceed o humihigit sa 10,000 pesos. pesos. Both individual and corporations as recipients ay exempt or um, not taxable siya. Tiga, kanina po doon ay, ano, yung 20% final tax or regular tax. Buti naman po ay, um, both um, exempt siya. Okay po? Um, 
The next one naman is PCSO or lotto winnings exceeding 10,000 pesos. Um, the individuals and the corporations, they are both 20, um, 20% final tax. Uh, kasi, bakit? Dahil nag-exceed sila sa 10,000 o oh, humigit yung price sa 10,000 pesos. Um, um, halimbawa nito ay yung um, may um, may napanalunan ka pero hindi mo siya makukuha ng buo dahil nga may deduction na 20% final tax. Okay po? So, mamaya, mas maunawa natin through the illustration. And, yung number 3 naman is um, other winnings in general. Kapag ang recipient naman ng individual ay mapapaalan siya sa 20% final tax. Otherwise, sa corporations naman ay regular tax. Okay po? So, um, note that um, yung mga uh, pag sinabi, sinabi natin na PCSO or lot of winnings ng NRA and EPB o yung non-resident alien not engaged in trade of business, ang iyong final tax could be um, 25%. While ang NIR F, ang NRFC o yung non-resident foreign corporations naman ay 30%. So, kaya si 25% dahil kapag ka NRA and EPB whether um, active income or passive income, dahil wala naman talaga sila sa Pilipinas at wala din silang negosyo dito. Automatically, final tax sila sa lahat ng kanilang kinikita kahit ano pa yan. Okay? So, take a look at the illustration. Um, a culinary won 10,000 pesos first place in the singing contest sponsored by Seed Company during their company um, anniversary celebration. Ibig sabihin lang dyan, since a culinary individual recipient na nanalo ng amounted na 10,000 pesos as payment ko, um, his price under lang siya ng regular tax at hindi siya subjected as 20% final tax. Bakit? Kasi hindi siya nag-exceed ng 10,000. Diga, katulad niya po na sinabi ko kanina. Okay po? So, um, pero kung yung price niya ay nag-exceed ng 10,000, makakakuha ang, ang seed company na 2,000 base sa 20% final tax. Tiga po. Okay, so number 2 naman. Okay, sa illustration number 2 naman tayo. Roy's raffle ticket was selected as the second winning ticket in the raffle draw of VFT Mall for 10,000 pesos dug as second prize. Um, yan. Dito naman, si um, dito, diba nga, sabi natin kanina, is may other winning. Ito ay subjected as 20% final tax. So, yung napanalunan ni Roy sa raffle na 10,000 payment ay may 20% final tax, which is may, ano, withhold ang um, ZF Mall na 2,000. And the last illustration is, Mr. Dante Paya made three bets to the PCSO Lotto Draws. All tickets won. Lahat daw ay nanalo. The details of the winnings were easy to um, 4,000 pesos. I don't know paano basahin to, pero siguro ay 6 over 42 ay 10,000 naman. Um, 6 over 45 ay 20, 20 million. Siya yung grand prize. Okay, so um, the 6 over 42 and easy 2 winnings are exempt since they did not um, exceed 10,000 in amount. PCSO shall withhold 20% final tax on the entire 20 million amount of the winnings. Okay, so dito, yung EC to and 6 over 42 ay exempt siya. Hindi siya taxable. Bakit? Dahil yung amount na napanalunan nila ay hindi kumigit o nag-exceed sa 10,000 pesos. Otherwise, the bets or draws na 6 over 45 ay amounted ng 20 million as real price. Okay? So, kumigit na siya sa 10,000 pesos. Um, in that case, um, PCSO shall withhold 20% final tax Meaning nun, may makukuha ang PCSO na 20% from the 20, 20 million, which is 4 million. Um, ibig sabihin nun, ay 16 million na lang ang makukuha ni Mr. Dante Paya as grand prize. Okay po? So, I hope na may naunawan kayo kahit pa paano and thank you for watching.
Tax Informers Reward. Tax Informers Reward. A cash reward may be given to any person instrumental in the discovery of violation of the National Internal Revenue Code or discovery and seizure of smuggled goods. The Tax Informers Reward is subject to 10% final tax. That means that in case that a company or person is proven guilty of tax invasion, informants may receive a sum which is equivalent to 10% of the revenues, surcharges, or fees, or possibly the fine imposed and collected, or 1 million pesos per case, whichever is lower. Smuggled good is the importing or exporting of goods secretly in violation of the law, especially without payment of legal duty. Requisites of tax, tax informers reward. When we say requisites, a thing that is necessary for the achievement of a specified end. The first one is definite sworn information which is not yet in possession of the VIR. That means when we say sworn, something like a testimony or an evidence given under oath. Though it is an information under oath, it is still not yet in the possession of the VIR. The second one is the information furnished lead to the discovery of fraud upon internal revenue loss or provision thereof. When we say fraud, wrongful or criminal deception intended to result in financial or personal gain. When we say furnish, that also means to supply, provide, or equip with whatever necessary or useful it is. The third one is enforcement results in recovery of revenue, surcharges, and fees, and or conviction of the guilty party or imposition of any fine or penalty. Let us define what is revenue. First, revenue money that is generated from normal business operations. The second one is the surcharge, which is the additional charge or premium. The third one is fees, which is fixed price charge. If they are proven guilty, fine or penalty would be applied and would result to the recovery of the fee as was stated from above. The fourth one is the informer must not be a letter A, BIR official or employee. Letter B, other public official or employee. Letter C, relative within the sixth degree of consanguinity of those officials or employee in A or B. When we say consanguinity, the fact of being descended from the same ancestors within the sixth degree. Amount of cash reward, whichever is the lower of the following per, per case. The first one, 10% of revenues, surcharges, or fees recovered and or fine, penalty imposed and collected, or the 1 million pesos. The amount of cash reward is subject to 10% final withholding tax, which shall be withheld by the government. As I was stated earlier, that if a company or a person is proven guilty, the amount of cash to be rewarded can be 10% of the revenue, surcharges, or fees that is being recovered, or it can be a reward of 1 million pesos with 10% withholding tax. Illustration. Ms. Kirsten provided information to the BIR leading to the recovery of 12 million pesos and paid taxes. The tax reward shall be computed as follows. 10% cash reward, that means 12 million pesos, which is the unpaid tax, multiplied by the 10% cash reward, which is equal to 1,200,000 pesos. Cash reward limit is equivalent to 1 million pesos. Cash reward, whichever is lower, is 1 million pesos less the 10% final withholding tax, which is equivalent to 100,000 pesos. 1 million pesos deducted by 100,000 pesos is equal to the net amount to be released to tax informer, amounting of 900,000 pesos for Ms. Kirsten. Tax-free corporate covenant bonds. Interest income of non-residents, aliens, citizens, or residents of the Philippines as bonds, mortgages, deeds of trust, or other similar obligations of domestic and resident foreign corporations with tax or tax reduction provision where the obligor shoulders in whole or in part any tax on the interest shall be subject to as a final withholding tax of 30 percent in is in the illustration the bond investors are considered considered as the individuals and in the corporations tax on interest income on tax free corporate Covenant bonds. When we say covenant bond, a legally binding term of agreement between a bond issuer and a bond holder. From individuals, 30% final tax. When we say final tax, it is a kind of withholding tax which is prescribed on certain income payments. And for the corporations, regularized income tax, which is 30% based on the net taxable income. Taxable rate are both for domestic and resident foreign corporations.
Good day everyone. I am Reggie T. Bacalista, BSBA, second year, major in financial management. And I'm here to discuss about exceptions to the general final tax on non-resident persons not engaged in trade or business in the Philippines. Ang first is the in chart. Sa general final tax rate, ang nakalagay niya sa NRA and ATV is 25%. Samantalang sa NRFC naman is 30%. Except, exceptions number one, capital gain on sale of domestic tax direct, directly to buyer. 15% capital gain tax yung madedudak sa kanya. Ganon din sa NRFC. Next is number 2. Rentals on cinematographic films and similar work. 25% of rentals sa NRA and ATV at ganon din sa NRFC. Next is number 3. Rental on vessel. 25% of rentals and 4.5% of rentals sa NRFC. Next is number 4. Rentals of aircrafts, machineries and other equipments. 25% of rentals ang madedudak sa kanya at sa 7.5% naman sa rentals of NRFC. And sa number 5, interest income under the foreign currency deposit system. Siya ay, ang nakalagay sa chart is XM. Ganon din sa NRFC, XM din siya. Next in, is number 6, interest on foreign loan. Ang nakalagay sa kanya is NA and the NRFC naman is 20%. Next is number 7, dividend income is 25% and the NRFC is 15% if tax pairing rule is, is applicable. Next is number 8. Tax on corporate bonds is 30% and also the NRFC is 30%. Next is capital gain tax. As a rule, NRA, ATVs, and NRFCs do not file income tax returns. Ex exceptionally, NRA, NATVs, and NFRCs are required to file income tax returns to report their gain from dealings in domestic stocks directly to buyer. Ownership of the stocks shall not be transferred to the assignee without the required return and tax clearance. Certificate Author Authorizing Registration or CAR from the BIR that the tax on the transfer has been paid. Ang ibig sabihin, ang capital gain tax is a tax imposed on the gains presumed to have been realized by the seller from the sale, exchange, other disposition of capital assets located in the Philippines, including pacto de retro sales and other forms of conditional sale. Next is illustration. NRA and ATV was hired by Raha Humabon Company, a domestic manufacturer to install his invention in RHC's factory. RHC pays him royalty and the installation fees. Mr. Wong also agreed to design RHC's website with the design and completed abroad. During Mr. Wong's visit, he purchased share of RHMC and subsequently sold them dire directly to buyer. Ang first one is royalty from invention, 300,000. Next is installation fees, 1 million. Website development fees, 500,000. And the last is gain on sale of domestic stocks directly to buyer, 40,000. RHC shall withholding the following final taxes. Ang nandito is royalties from invention, 300,000. Professional fees, 1 million. And you will add the 300,000 to 1 million. And the total gross income is 1,300,000. 1, 1, and multiply by final tax on NRA and ETB is 25%. Then, ang nakalagay dito sa given is, ang total niya is 32,500,000. Pero pag kinalkin niyo siya sa, ano, is 1,300,000 times 25%, ang lalabas dun is 325,000. Uh, pero ang total dito sa pinaka-given is, total final withholding tax is 32,500,000. Tax firing rule. NRFCs shall be subject to a 15% final tax on dividend income instead of the 30% general final tax if the country of domicile of the NRFC credits against the tax due of such NRFC taxes presumed to have been paid by such NRFC from the Philippines equivalent to 15% of the dividends. In applying the tax sparring rule, the Supreme Court ruled that the NIRC does not require that the foreign law of the non-resident corporation must give a uh, deemed paid tax credit for dividend equivalent to the percentage points 
waived by the Philippines, pointing that the NIRC merely required the country of the NRFC to uh, deem paid tax equivalent to that waived by the Philippines. As the requirement of the tax sparring rule is deemed satisfied of the country to which the NRFC is domiciled, imposes no tax on dividends from foreign sources. We are ruling no. 104-2012, March 22-2012. Illustration, the tax sparring rule with NRFCs. An NRFC is due to receive a dividend of 1 million from a domestic corporation. Ibig sabihin daw po, ang NRFC is due to receive a dividend of 1 million from a corporation dito sa Philippines. The final tax to be imposed by the Philippines will shall be withheld by the domestic corporation shall be 15% not 30%. Ang final tax daw po ng, na iniipos by the Philippines is 15% at hindi 30%. If the country of domicile of the NRFC also reduces its income tax upon the 1 million dividends by at least 15%, the dividend tax percentage waived by the Philippines from 30% general final tax rate. Kapag daw po, ang, ang ibig sabihin daw po ng country of domicile is kung saan daw po nakareside yung country or yung company or yung property. Kapag daw po ang NRFC is nag-reduce ng at by at least 15%, ang Philippines daw po is magbabawas, magbabawas din ng 15%. Hindi po magiging 30%. From the 30% general final tax rate ng Philippines. And if country of the NRFC does not reduce its tax on the dividend by at least 15%, the Philippines impose the 30% final tax. Yun. Kapag naman daw po yung NRFC is hindi nag-reduce ng tax in dividend by at least 15%, ganoon din po yung Philippines. Hindi rin po siya magbababa ng 15%. Magpus is magtatas din po siya ng 30% as the final tax. At yun po ang ibig sabihin ng the tax-sparing rule.